Welcome back to Novel Solo Cultivation in the Apocalypse. Hope you like this series so far. Enjoy. Chapter 21 The phoenix covered the night sky in flames, its whole body was covered in flames itself. Kamaya had provided Hidori with two defense walls, but even Kamaya was not sure if they would be able to survive the attack's impact. On the phoenix meteor impact, all of the debris flew up high in the air. Kamaya closed his eyes for a second, the flames took over the roof, walls collapsed, stones blew into pieces, and the ground ended up with a big hole in it. The next second Kamaya opened his eyes, all that he could see were stones, bricks, debris, dust, and fire. The dust had blocked his view. Hidori, he quickly raised his wand and lifted his wrist before he would chant the spell. The area where Hidori was supposed to be was covered in stones, dust, and fire. Kamaya was not even sure about Hitori's condition. Water pulse, he swung his wand down, and multiple sickles of water were headed towards the dust-covered area. He swung his wand down again, water splash, splashes of water in irregular shapes fell on the dust and fire. It did not take Kamaya long to clear the dust and fire. What Kamaya exactly feared had happened. Hidori was not where he was supposed to be. The walls Kamaya created were nowhere to be found either. Kamaya used levitation to go even higher, only a few feet, to get a clear view of Hidori. It was empty, Hitori's spot was empty. A few stones had taken Hitori's place though. He landed back on the wall, and brought his wand in front of his lips, Hito dash he stopped midway when he realized something important. If Hitori was killed by the phoenix boss in this attack, then one thing would have happened. Yes, if he is dead, he would leave something behind, the game would leave something behind which would include player Ryu's name. Kamaya brought his wand down. The phoenix was still struggling to get up from the ground it had stuck its head in. This is the best chance. Kamaya thought. In a few seconds, he climbed down the wall. He jumped over a stone that stood in its way, if Hidori is dead. He ran towards the spot Hidori was before the crash, then I would have received a notification. Saying player Ryu has left the duo. Player Ryu has left the dungeon. Player Ryu is dead. Player Ryu has logged out of the game. But nothing like that popped up, he is not dead yet, Kamaya shot another splash of water but nothing seemed to happen, where are you, he jumped over a collapsed wall. Kamaya heard some sort of robotic sound of a click. His eyes adjusted to the dust, and he saw a yellow light in the middle of the dust. Ryu Level 12 HP, 4175. The bar glowed in yellow light. A smile spread on Kamaya's face in relief, we got to finish this, friend, our first dungeon as a duo. Squawk. Hito Dash the bird's scream interrupted Kamaya. He glanced behind him, the bird was rising. He quickly stepped back and ran in the other direction, away from the phoenix. Its giant 15 feet long wings blew all of the debris away. The dust that covered the roof mixed with the air. The fire that lit the ground was extinguished like a candle's flame. Kamaya. Run, before Hitori's voice would reach him, the air took Kamaya with it and banged him on a wall. HP 97 120. He still had a lot of health points with him. Kamaya raised his eyes at the giant figure that lifted itself off the ground. The fiery wings that supported it the most, those dagger-like claws that helped it hunt its prey, and finally the giant 35 feet long body that made him this dungeon's boss. Well, it's intelligence too. Kamaya used a levitation spell to fly up in the air to get away from the boss as quickly as possible. His eyes caught the phoenix's yellow health bar. Boss Phoenix Level 17 HP 66-155 TCH, Kamaya clenched his wand in his hand. He lifted his wand and directly pointed at the phoenix. Shinigami no Noroi, 
he made sure his wand does not move while he casts this spell. A cold expression appeared on his face, his lips parted to chant the spell. No emotions reflected in his eyes. All he wanted was, the phoenix's death. Core dash he spotted something that made him stop. He stared closely at the phoenix that was rising in the sky. Katana, a frown appeared on his face. He moved his eyes to the ground, he caught a yellow health bar moving around the ground and shining below him, Hidori. I am fine, thanks. Hidori raised his hand, we need to regroup. The deadly expressions wore off Kamaya's face. He looked down at Hidori, he headed to the backside of the dungeon while the bird made its way back to the sky. It is low on health, we need to finish it right now, Hidori explained as if Kamaya did not know this already. How to, is the problem. Kamaya went into deep thought. He was five levels higher than the boss, he should have been able to take down the boss on his own but still, the phoenix had gained the upper hand. Hidori turned around and shot the boss with the purple bullets, only a few of them touched the phoenix and barely had any effect. Water beam, Hidori raised his hands, water pulse, bubble beam, he changed his spell from one to another within a second. Squeak. The bird let out a whistling sound. It flapped its wings and lifted its body higher in the sky. From behind Hidori, Kamaya had slowly risen from the ground, his bluish-purple robes were covered in dust. His glasses sat tightly on his eyes, and his wand sat tightly in his hand. No. Why again? Hidori snickered, he saw his katana, still stuck in the bird's stomach. It has not been even five minutes since the boss had used its trump card, but yet again, it was soaring up in the sky, getting ready for another meteor crash. He spoke as he slowly turned around, Kamaya, could you please use the defense walls? His words caught up in his mouth. Kamaya raised his wand at Hidori with a dead serious expression. Cock. A gun cocked. Kamaya did not even bother to look down at the purple gun that was pointed at his guts. Wand. Down, Hidori muttered with a pause. Move away, Hidori, those words escaped Kamaya's mouth like a snake's hiss. Hidori glanced behind him, he saw what exactly Kamaya had pointed his wand at. Without hesitating, he quickly took a few steps away from Kamaya. What do you dash? Shinigami no Noroi, as expected, Hitori's eyes went wide in surprise. For the first time, fear sparked in Hitori's deep blue cold eyes. Hitori's eyes went blank in fear. His gun would not stop shaking, why does he know that spell? He lifted his red eyes at the phoenix, Koros, Kamaya hissed once again. Chapter 22 Hidori looked at the phoenix, it was only a few feet away from the ground. I have realized my mistake, I ran. He covered his arms in the water and formed a cross in front of his head to cover himself, I ran. Dark orange flames engulfed the whole roof in the fire. The phoenix crashed to the ground, stones flew all over the place, and walls collapsed. The flames made their way to Hidori and crashed with the first defense wall that Kamaya had created for him. It did not take the flame more than five seconds to break through the first defense wall. Its impact damaged the second wall, the flames crashed with the second wall, and the wall took the flames and the impact with it. Hitori left his water wall standing where it was. He pulled out his katana and started to run where the phoenix had crashed. The phoenix's head was stuck in the ground, before it could pull itself out, Hidori stabbed the phoenix in its stomach. Squeak. That got it even more angered, it flapped its wings furiously. Hidori used his katana to climb the phoenix's body. Hidori pulled out his katana that was stabbed in the phoenix's body. He slowly tore the phoenix's stomach. Mana manipulation, Hidori activated his skill, he faced some trouble to pull his katana further down. Spell failed. The opponent is too strong compared to your level. Squawk, squawk. 
The phoenix furiously swung its wings. Its body changed color, the orange body turned into a dark red body. Yes, the phoenix was heating its body. HP 33 75ths. Hidori had lost some of his health points because he stood on a boiling body. When the phoenix gave its wings a final swing, fire erupted from its body and wings. Hidori quickly jerked his body, took a jump in the air, and landed on his katana's hilt. With another jolt, he went further high in the air. He quickly equipped himself with his gun. From one hand, water magic, in another hand, his gun. Mana overdrive, Hidori aimed his gun at the rising bird, water beam. Squeak. He shot a few bullets, the bird pulled its head out of the hole, and Hitori's water beam smacked the phoenix. It was already rising from the ground. TCH. Hidori clicked his tongue. He was about to fall down and he had no levitation spell with him. In all the dust that was blown away by the phoenix, he could not spot Kamaya. Even if he did, he could not be able to ask Kamaya to use the levitation spell. My katana, on his way down to the ground, he stretched out his hand to reach for his katana which was going up in the sky with the phoenix. He stretched his fingers out, his fingers made contact with the hilt of his katana. Hidori used the water beam behind him to keep himself in the air and to give a jump start in order to grab his katana. The phoenix whistled. His hands wrapped around his katana's grip, ye dash he lost his balance, and his hands slipped off. He still had managed to pull the katana out a little bit. But while you are in the midair, it is not quite easy. Fire beam, he pulled both of his hands in front of him, a straight line of fire touched the ground, Hidori managed to land safely on the ground. He started to pant, Kamaya, where are you dash he raised his eyes to the walls, Kamaya was climbing the wall, and he looked as if he was about to cast or had already cast a spell. Kamaya. We need to regroup. They both gathered behind a rock. The phoenix had gone high in the air. Shinigami no Noroi, when Hidori had stepped aside from Kamaya's wand, he heard the name of a curse which was not used by common men and not used in normal circumstances. Koros. Hidori kept his eyes wide open, he had never witnessed this curse himself so he was pretty fueled up too, just to end up in disappointment later. What happened to the curse? Hidori stared at the phoenix and Kamaya blindly. Real life spells. Kamaya lowered his wand, do not work in the game. Unless you have acquired the spell in the game, right, Hidori added. Kamaya glanced at him and nodded. It failed. Do not ask me how I do know about this curse, Kamaya shook his head with a frown. Hidori sighed because he was going to ask Kamaya the same. I would not but, make sure you do not use it on the bullies, Hidori started to run out in the open. No, they are not the ones who get on nerves, Kamaya followed Hidori till they both stopped behind Hitori's water wall. Do you have a plan? Yeah, my katana has fallen somewhere on the roof, I need you to find me my katana, I will do the rest, with that being said, Hidori rushed out of the cover and ran over to the crash impact spot of the phoenix. Find your katana? In this mess? Kamaya shook his head, he joined Hidori who was taking cover behind a wall. Do you see that hole, Kamaya? Hidori pointed at a hole that was made in the middle of the phoenix's stomach with his katana. I can now, but will not be able to if its free fall speed increases, Kamaya replied. Hidori got off the ground, he stood under the phoenix, fire blast, Hidori chanted, and a wave of fire fell on the spinning phoenix. It still had not entered the meteor attack mode completely so a few fire blasts were enough to break the phoenix's focus. At the count of one, Kamaya, we take this bird out, Hidori pulled his right hand to the lower right side, epic magic wand, a dark purple color wand appeared in Hitori's hand. It was somewhere around ten and a half inches long. It had a thick bottom and became thin on the way to its tip. 
both Kamaya and Hidori pointed their wands at the phoenix who had stopped moving in the midair, oh, we do it, then, Kamaya gripped his wand tightly. 1. They both stared at the hole that was visible from below. Mizu no Maha, their voices rang through the whole roof in sync, now. Hydro pump, a thick blast of water erupted from Hitori's wand and a huge amount of water shot at the phoenix's wound under high pressure. Torrent, a bigger wave of water came from Kamaya's wand. His arm holding the wand jerked back, he frowned because the recoil had cost him seven health points. The water started filling up the phoenix's wound. The phoenix made all sorts of sounds a bird could make. It looked like it was throwing a tantrum in pain and anger. Ah, their attacks went past the phoenix. The phoenix soared up in the sky, out of their reach. Ah. Uh. The two forces of water stopped, they both bent down, I think. Kamaya panted, it is the time for that dot. Hidori glanced at his partner. Sure, he nodded. Whoosh. A strong gust mixed with fire encountered them, watch out. Hidori saw Kamaya's wand appear in front of him, air blast. Kamaya's attack repelled a steel katana, clad in black color. Thanks, Hidori thanked him, you found me my katana, he rushed to the piece of metal which fell a few meters away. Kamaya had a, are you serious, expression on his face. The phoenix let out another whistle, and they both lifted their heads. The phoenix had wrapped its wings around its body and, its free fall had started. Once again, we need to reduce the final impact, Hidori gulped, he raised his wand along with Kamaya. Hydro pump. Torrent, to cast the torrent spell once again, it would end up sucking maximum mana out of Kamaya. At the start, the phoenix was still coming down at an insane speed but as time passed by, Hidori and Kamaya's water magic affected the phoenix's meteor crash. It has slowed down. Only slowed down, it will still crash, Hidori told him. On the other hand, Hidori grabbed his katana. Boom. It managed to break their water magic. Kamaya lost his mana to keep up his torrent spell, the torrent of water became weak and could not contain the boss anymore. Behind the water wall, now. Hidori ordered. Kamaya took off running to the water wall, he stood up a defense wall of his own. Hidori was aware of it, too, Kamaya was low on mana. He did not have unlimited mana, because he could not cultivate mana like Hidori. Although Hidori cultivated mana, he was not able to use the mana he cultivated. Its freefall speed increased stupendously after Hidori pulled back his spell. His hands went to his katana, he started to run towards the impact spot. He held his katana on the side, the phoenix was only a few meters away from crashing to the ground. Flames had, as usually, engulfed the phoenix. For the nth time, I hate your trump card, Hidori pulled the katana behind him, his back facing the phoenix, leafcutter, he muttered the name of one of his skills. He gulped for the last time, four meters, three meters. This would end up with Hitori's death if he fails to chop off the phoenix's head before it crashes. Two. And one. Arg. Hitori groaned. He felt his katana had made contact with the phoenix's neck. Leaf cutter activated. And with the help of this skill, Hidori felt his katana had passed through the phoenix's thick neck as if he had cut a marshmallow. Hidori spun around in a circle as if his katana had cut air and not the phoenix's neck. Crack, sputter. A wave of flames much, much bigger than any of the flames before, and spread over the whole tenth floor of this level 10 fire dungeon. Ripples of fire devastated the whole land. Chapter 23 Hidori was sure he felt his katana cut nothing but air when he swung it with all of his strength. Because it did not hit anything, he spun around at the spot due to the falla throw. Just as before, everything on the roof was covered with flames of fire. As soon as the phoenix crashed on the ground, it caused a much bigger impact than ever. 
The walls Kamaya used as a defense against the meteor crash's impact were destroyed on the next second of the impact. He crashed against the tall border wall and ended up losing more than just a bit of his health. Cough. He did not feel the pain but he coughed a mouthful of blood. He placed his hand on his chest to calm himself down, his wand was trembling in his hand, thank God he did not lose it on the way. Hidori. He pushed himself off the wall. He still had a lot of health with him, the health bar had barely touched the yellow line. His eyes examined the whole area under them but alas, they could not spot Hidori for Kamaya. A sense of helplessness and hopelessness started to make their way inside Kamaya's heart, after all this? How can we lose, he demanded an answer, cannot be happening, he denied the fact that they have lost the dungeon's final fight. Click. The fire and dust blew away. Kamaya thought his ears were playing a trick on him but on a closer look in the dust, he heard the mechanical click once again. Kamaya lifted himself off the ground, he sat on his knees. He took a step closer towards the dust that flew all across the roof and the fire, of course. A dark red color health bar appeared in front of him, flying in the midair. A smile spread across his lips but which, too, soon disappeared. The health bar was glowing in red color. The number that represented a particular player's health displayed the number two. As expected, he pulled out his wand calmly, Kami no Megumi. He quietly chanted the spell with barely moving his lips, Ayashi, he gently said and opened his red eyes. A dark blue beam of light came out from his wand and fell on the person he wanted to heal. To use a god's blessing would again suck a lot of mana from the user, but it was worth it. Name, Ryu Level 12. HP, 375. HP, 1375. Hidori coughed a few times. He was low on stamina, but when his health started to restore, he found himself able to move once again. Hidori quickly turned his head towards the direction from where the sound of chanting a magical spell came from. His eyes met with those shiny glasses which reflected the night's moon on them. A blue aura had covered his body, it was clear where it was emitted from. He smiled back at Hidori, finish, the battle. Kamaya muttered weakly. The blue aura that covered Hitori's body disappeared. The light of the beam from Kamaya's wand disappeared. HP, 5375. Hidori hurried up to Kamaya, he fell down to the ground. His wand fell out of his hand and flew up in the air. Hidori took a light jump and caught the wand before squatting down on the ground with Kamaya in his hands. Kamaya. I am out of mana. Kamaya opened his status screen. Hidori did not bother to take a look at his mana. It was obvious, clearly. He used the torrent magic twice and a high-level healing spell once. It would be a cheat if he was not out of mana. It is fine, Hitori smiled at him. Why would Hitori smile? We have already won the battle. He pointed in the phoenix's direction with Kamaya's wand. The sight was clear for Kamaya. Nothing but ashes, dark gray ashes remained there. Kamaya glanced at Hidori with a surprised grin. I, I thought the boss's attack was successful? Well, I thought the same. Hidori glanced at the pile of ash, but before the whole ground was set on fire, I saw that the phoenix's head was detached from its body. What crashed was the rest of its body. But then the fire should have died. It set itself on fire as soon as its neck was cut and it was beheaded. Hidori explained with a grin. Kamaya realized and nodded a few times in response, just what a phoenix does when it dies, Kamaya scoffed. Hidori sighed with a light laugh. He shook his head and lifted his eyes, they fell on Kamaya's status screen. I only have three no, two mana points left. Kamaya started. Mana, 2-12650. I shall log out before I die here. Hmm. Hidori nodded, I will wait for you here. 
Auto saved. Congratulations on clearing a level 15 fire dungeon. Hmm, he opened the logout screen, see you here in one. At least complete your sentence, what is the hurry? Hitori thought. Switch. Kamaya vanished from Hitori's arms. He sighed and sat back on his knees. He threw his head up and looked at the sky. Black particles of ash flew away in the sky. God's hell has left the dungeon. God's hell has logged out. It takes only a few seconds to log out of the game, but it might take somewhere around a minute to log in back into the game. And Hidori was not sure if Kamaya would be spawned directly in the dungeon or at the start point. The dungeon was the latest save point though. The duo of Ryu and God's Hell has conquered a level 15 fire dungeon. Killed a level 17 phoenix boss. Leveled up to level 14. Obtained an epic treasure. On completing the quest acquired. Plus one rare treasure. Plus 10,000 yen. Plus 170 mana gems. Obtained two rare skills and one rare spell. Hidori ignored all the messages popping in front of his eyes, his main focus was on completing the remaining task. Soul liquefied. Cultivated mana, 40,000 slash 40,000. I should be able to enter the next domain dash, his thoughts were interrupted. He saw something, something moved in the pile of ash. Hidori turned his serious eyes at the ask and moved closer. He heard a high-pitched chirp of a bird before the tiny head of a bird popped out of the ashes. He frowned before leaning closer to the baby chicken. Dungeon Boss, Reborn, Level 1. It is cute. Hidori touched its head lightly. It did not have any feathers on it but, a small flame was burning on the tip of its tail. Would you like to name your pet? Pet, he frowned. Hidori got up from the ground, he wanted to take Kamaya's opinion about this. But he was nowhere to be found. Not yet, he looked around. Hidori opened the chat window and texted Kamaya but got no reply from him. Of course, it showed that Kamaya was still online. He guessed maybe Kamaya was using the washroom so he decided to wait for two more minutes. Still no reply. Hidori hence waited for five minutes but he got no reply from Kamaya and neither did he receive a message of Kamaya logging into the game. Log out. Hidori opened his game screen and stared at the log out option for a few seconds. He finally gave up and selected to log out. He sensed something fishy was going on with Kamaya's situation. Chapter 24 he received a notification from the game telling him that he is logged out of the game. Hidori was expecting trouble when he stepped out of the game but, not one of this level. He sat in his seat when he heard Kamaya's voice behind him, leave me, for God's sake. Do not raise your voice in front of us, he heard a slapping sound. Oh, Gigi, the voice of another annoying bully, see who we have here, the legendary. Ryu. Hidori tapped his magic circle, and the game card came out but before he could grab it, Hiki stretched out his robotic arm to grab the card. Hand me my card back, Hidori got out of his chair, he saw Kamaya lying down on the ground, his glasses slipping off his nose once again. Take it then, use your magic, burn us to death. Gigi stepped forward and stood in front of Hidori with Hitori's gaming card on his card. Not worth using my magic on you, uh, just hand me my card back and leave me alone. How does it feel to get dragged into some shit you did not sign up for? Gigi looked down at Hidori. He stood a foot or two taller than Hidori. With his battle suit activated, he seemed even taller than he was. Leave you alone? Hiki scoffed, you are involved in this shit now, he laughed. Hitori could feel why Kamaya was intimidated by these guys. I am not dragged into some shit I did not sign up for. Hitori lifted his cold eyes to counter Gigi's intimidating look, I got myself involved in this. Gigi frowned and stepped closer, there is nobody to save you today, 
filthy magic user, Gigi lifted his arms. His fists transformed, some kind of metal gauntlets covered his fists soon. Let us finish our unfinished business, he cracked his knuckles. Hito dash. Kamaya was kicked back to the ground by Hickey. Max strength gauntlets, Gigi muttered. He pulled his arms back and swung a strong punch in Hitori's direction. They indeed were strong. Because when Hitori dodged them, he felt a strong pulse of air pass behind him. Although they were strong, they were not fast enough, which let Hitori escape every punch. As expected of science users, your brains are empty. Your brains are empty, his punch went past Hitori's ear, then he lifted his knee. He fell back to the ground on his butt. Hitori felt like throwing up. From ahead, he saw another punch about to smash his face and change the look on his cold face. Kamaya took his real-life wand out and aimed it at Gigi who was about to punch his partner. High bus dash he forgot that Hickey was still present there, he got punched by Hickey once again. Keep your filthy magic wand away, you would not like it if it is snapped into two, right? Science users touching a mage's wand was considered a filthy and low-grade act. So all of them never dared to touch a mage's wand unless they wanted to be ridiculed and disgusted by their fellow science users. Hidori somehow managed to roll to the floor and dodge another punch. The floor below Hidori was smashed into tiny pieces. Average strength, max speed, Hidori knew that this set of stats would put him on the side of danger. He quickly pushed himself off the floor and stood upright to face Gigi. Multiple punches started to come in his way, he dodged a few but soon had to block them. His forearms dealt with damage because of blocking the metal gauntlets. Thap. Finally, a punch landed in his guts and he fell to the floor once again. At the same time Hidori brought his hand over to his stomach and he lifted his head. Let us take him to Kuzusan. Hiki said from behind, show him, we have found his fucker. Gigi clicked his tongue, he was panting a bit. He deactivated his gauntlets and turned around to Hickey, fine. You take that shit, I will handle this shit. Then Gigi turned back to Hidori. This bastard will be tortured for his mistake of messing with Kuzusan's items. Gigi bent down to lift Hidori from the ground. They were never his items. He stopped when Hidori said something. He stole those items from others. Shut up, Gigi kicked him in the face, he is not a thief. Hidori pushed himself off the floor with the help of his hand. Of course, he is, he grinned at Gigi. A hideous frown, full of anger, appeared on Gigi's face. Hidori knew this punch would hurt more than any of the punches before. Gigi's punch landed on the floor once again, Hidori slid off from the floor and he went behind Gigi without rising from the ground. Hiki lifted his leg to kick Hidori, but he fell to the ground. Hidori saw Kamaya adjusting his glasses. Hidori dived forward to the floor and stretched out his hand to reach Kamaya's wand that was lying on the floor. You arse! Gigi turned behind him and lifted his fist once again. Hidori grabbed Kamaya's wand. He used the momentum to rise from the ground. He dodged Gigi's punch and point his wand at him. Shukyo, he gave the wand a swing. As soon as he cast the spell on Gigi, Gigi stopped moving. Then Hidori turned to Hiki, Shukyo, he said calmly. Hidori and Kamaya both gulped, did it work? asked Kamaya, still on the ground. Hitori hesitantly nodded his head in response to Kamaya. Hitori and Kamaya stared at the lost-minded Gigi and Hiki who both were staring at the roof above their heads. None of them made a move. Who are you? Gigi frowned. Stranger, Hitori replied, do I know you, sir? Hitori moved closer to Gigi. He glanced around the VR Kate alley. What is this? It is my house, sir, you are intruding on my house, so I would like you to get out, leave, his eyes fell on Kamaya. 
And who is he? Who are you? Hickey rose from the floor, and why am I intruding on your house? Leave right now. Kamaya pushed his glasses back with his middle finger. Okay, okay, we will, do not be so rude. Gigi and Hickey turned around at once. Big house, do not you think so, mate? Sure is. Gigi nodded, what is your name, by the way, he asked Hickey, I am, wait. His smile faded, who am I? Right, I do not remember my name either. They both started solving the puzzle. Meanwhile, Hidori turned to Kamaya who was still sitting on the ground. He stretched his hand for Kamaya. Nice support, partner, Hidori pulled him up from the ground. Kamaya patted his clothes, then looked at Hidori. Kamaya pointed at a locket that danced out of Hidori's t-shirt. Nice locket, partner. Kamaya nodded his head. Hidori glanced down at his chest, he quickly grabbed the silver color locket and pulled it inside his t-shirt. We are compatible with each other, do not you think? Kamaya changed the topic. Hidori looked at him and nodded, his eyes roamed around the alley. Do you know a spell to repair things? Hidori asked while scanning the damages Gigi made to the floor. It would be better if they fix the things before someone comes. I do not know if you are too intelligent or too dumb to know a spell that would erase memory but do not know a spell to repair this mess. Hidori turned to Kamaya who had his hand stretched out in front of him, I do not know a spell to heal this pain either, Hidori handed Kamaya his wand and walked past him. Shuri. Kamaya swung his hand along with his wand in circles till the damage was repaired. The pieces of concrete and tiles went back into one piece, all the dust was cleared. Uh. Kamaya grabbed his chest. Does it hurt? Hidori grabbed him from the shoulders. A little. I am low on mana, he turned around and handed Hidori his wand, you do the healing spell Naos, he took a seat in his chair. Hidori looked down at Kamaya, Naos, he brought his wand down along with his wrist, but. Nothing happened. It is not an attack, it is a healing charm, do it gracefully. Gracefully? Hidori frowned. Move your hand along with your wrist in a circle once, then bring your wand down with the chant of the charm. Hidori followed the instructions, Naos. A light blue light came from the wand that started healing Kamaya. Noise, use it on yourself now. He instructed. Hitori did the same, all of the pain in his body disappeared. Thanks to his unlimited mana, he just cultivated even more mana. All right. Kamaya picked up his and Hitori's card from the ground, let us finish what we started, he handed Hitori his premium player card. But, are you? He saw the spark of determination in Kamaya's eyes to continue the game, he did not bother asking. Hidori sat down in his chair, inserted the card in the magic circle, and made himself comfortable. All right, he sighed in relief. His identity was almost exposed to that scrap picker after all, but he saved himself. Kamaya and Hidori, they both immersed in the game. Chapter 25 Hidori thought they would be spawned on the starting point, the old broken-down building with the water fountain in the middle. But when they logged into the game, they saw tall walls surrounding them. Welcome to the tenth floor of your level 15 fire dungeon. Territory of Ryu and God's Hell. I had guessed you were the player Ryu Kuzu-san was looking for. Do not use Sandot. Hidori walked past Kamaya as soon as they stepped out from the portal, and well, yes, that I am, he turned around and confessed. The floor was clear and as new as before. Well, not really. There were walls and rocks and debris all around the floor as they were before Hidori and Kamaya defeated the Phoenix boss. Where are you looking for? He asked when he saw Hidori step forward and turn to the left side, and, what happened to the Phoenix? Hidori did not reply. Just how bad can Kuzu's group get? Hidori asked out of nowhere. 
Kamaya took his time before replying. Kuzu san hug, cough. You know he is super strong, Kuzu has not got much of a family background though, he started, but he works under a boss named Anaji, he is. I do not know how bad this Anaji person can get. Hidori nodded as he walked past the wall which separated the rest of the dungeon from the boss's nest. What were they doing in the V-Arcade so late at night? I do not think bullies have anything better to do than spend their days and nights bullying someone. I doubt if they even sleep. Hidori suddenly stopped in front of Kamaya when they both went past the wall, there it is, a smile spread over his face. He bent down near a big rock. Kamaya took a few steps forward, he was too shocked to move, my god. His eyes widened when he saw a tiny bird in Hitori's hands, it is a female baby phoenix, Kamaya expressed his shock. Hitori bent near boss phoenix's nest. As soon as he bent down, he saw a tiny bird coming his way, the little fire on its tail was the only thing that burned now unlike the adult version of this phoenix boss. Three big rocks stood behind the nest and in the middle was a big mat made of straws where the baby phoenix lay. The nest was actually quite big for the phoenix. Amazing, she is your pet. He read the description of the baby phoenix, seems more like a daughter to me though, he mocked Hidori. Hidori slowly petted the small bird as it squealed. What is wrong with her? She is squealing like crazy. Hidori frowned. Maybe she needs to be fed, Kamaya added, do you have mana gems with you? Maybe fire mana gems can do. On Kamaya's advice, Hidori opened his inventory and pulled out ten fire mana gems. The phoenix baby leaned down and gobbled the gems without chewing them. The gems were not really stones, their covering was really thin, it would break if you pinch it in between your two pinkies. It leveled up, Kamaya reported. What? Hidori saw the size of the baby phoenix had increased a little, crikey. It is better if you leave a few gems for her, Kamaya turned around, by the way, did you name the dungeon? Oh. We are supposed to do that? Kamaya nodded, fine, let us do it, Hidori got off the ground after leaving twenty gems or so with his baby phoenix. Let me name the dungeon, I will let you name the phoenix, they both agreed. They took their time before entering the names. God's Hell has named the level 15 fire dungeon as Hogoshu Phoenix. Ryu has named the dungeon boss as Fierce. Fierce? Kamaya went closer to Hidori. Hmm, he petted the bird once again, cause she is fierce as fire, a smile spread on his face and Kamaya nodded. Kamaya turned around and wandered around the tenth floor, I see you have collected the drops. Yes, Hidori got up, and I mean to divide them between us, Hidori opened his inventory screen and dropped all of the items he obtained from clearing the dungeon. Open the treasures. Hidori asked Kamaya to open an epic and a rare grade treasure. You keep the special spell module, Kamaya, with one skill module. Let me have this chest piece level 15 and this special skill. Money 50-50 split then, Kamaya proposed. Hitori nodded. A kind of disappointment flashed on Kamaya's face. What are these special skills? Hitori asked. Well, they are special, he shrugged with a grin. They left the dungeon after they split the money and gems. Hitori took three-fourth of the potions and left mana potion, stamina, and magic enchantment potion with Kamaya. Let me have this mana enchanter, I will be able to cast high-level spells. There you go, Hidori was now holding a magic dagger in his hands. Would you let me have the magic dagger? Cause you already have the dungeon's secret weapon. They both passed through the portal. Hidori stopped where he stood and frowned, what secret weapon? Kamaya frowned too. He slowly walked closer to Hidori and asked. When you entered this ninth floor, did you not acquire a secret item or a weapon on this floor? Hitori thought for a second before he replied. J just some mana and an epic potion. 
Are you sure, friend, that is all? Kamaya pushed his glasses back, his glasses shined even when there was no light to reflect. We do not want trust issues, Kamaya, Hidori took a step back, that is the wall where I found a potion and a mana gem, powerful one. I am not doubting you, but… I just want to make sure Dash Hidori lifted his hand, tapped his screen open, went to equipment, and opened the weapons and equipment window. There you go, Kamaya's eyes scanned the whole window in a flash, anything worthy of being called a secret weapon? Kamaya glanced at Hidori before stepping back. You should not expose your items and skills to anyone like that, they might use it against you. Well, will you? Hidori looked straight into Kamaya's eyes. He walked to the other side of the floor and asked again, Will you use this against me? Kamaya looked down, he opened his wrist and his wand appeared in his hand, You leave me no choice. He raised his wand and pointed at Hidori, I will need to check it for myself. Hidori quickly equipped his gun but before he could shoot, Kamaya chanted the spell, Bakuhatsu, a spark of light came from his wand and the sound of an explosion echoed. Hidori had ducked the attack, he raised his head and shot a bullet in Kamaya's direction. Repel, an invisible wall, pushed Hitori's bullet away from Kamaya when he moved his wand lightly. Stay back, Hidori said calmly as he shot a few more bullets, Kamaya had started to move without attacking Hidori. Stop shooting me, you are exhausting both of us, of course, Hidori did not stop, he rather went for the mana overdrive technique, God's hell. Look behind you. Hidori glanced behind him in a flash, but he had to go again. The wall behind him was broken into pieces. Nothing but a hollow space was visible. He sighed in relief. I thought this is where our duo ends. Hidori muttered while staring at Kamaya. You wish. I do not want to let go of such a compatible partner. Kamaya raised his wand once again, Bakuhatsu. With another explosion, a big hole was formed in the wall. Nothing but darkness. Nice spell. Thanks to you, he stepped forward towards the hole, special spell, you know, he jumped inside the hole of three feet radius and vanished in front of Hitori's eyes. Hitori blinked a couple of times before jumping in himself, you sure know a lot of secret stuff, he muttered on his way. God's Hell and Ryu have discovered the secret passage. Chapter 26 They had passed through the hole on the ninth floor. Hidori felt as if the whole world spun before it stopped and he appeared in a closed place. There were tall walls on the left and front side, behind was the exit hole, and on the right were three big rocks. It created a small closed place. In the middle of the tiny place was a tiny shiny object. Kamaya glanced at Hidori as he went closer to the shiny object. Then he paused in front of the object. Kamaya raised his hand and gestured to Hidori to take the shiny crystal. All yours, he muttered with a smile. Hidori glanced at Kamaya, he gulped and walked near the tiny crystal. This. The secret item, not weapon but an item, Kamaya explained, take it. At Kamaya's command, Hidori stretched his hand and reached for the tiny object. As soon as he got it in his hands. You have discovered the secret skill. Acquired. Plus one skill, Water Saber level 14. Plus 50 Fire Mana Gems. A skill. Kamaya curved his lips for a second, well, let me have the dagger though. Ah, yeah, sure. Hidori opened his inventory and handed Kamaya the magic dagger. Hidori turned to Kamaya, who was still surprised by the secret skill that was hidden on the ninth floor. Reach the maximum threshold of water element cultivation. You will enter the next domain of element cultivation. Power 55, magic 10, speed 33, HM, a pretty good skill, it would have helped us bring down the phoenix, Kamaya read further a skill that enchants a weapon with water. I tried covering my blade with water but it barely dash. This skill consumes less amount of mana and, it is ideal for killing a fire phoenix and, it is quite effective on a fire dragon, 
Kamaya continued, it would have been more effective than using water magic to cover your katana, Hidori nodded in agreement. We won anyway, they both exchanged glances before they let out a soft chuckle. After they both exited the hole, Hidori stopped and asked, what is the actual use of these gems, Kamaya? Kamaya stopped in front of Hidori, he glanced back at Hidori, dabbed his glasses, and muttered. Come with me, they both took the exit portal and came out of their dungeon. As soon as they stepped out, a notification appeared. This dungeon and the area within a 75-meter radius of the dungeon is your territory. The monsters on each floor will protect your dungeon, including the boss from other players during a raid. The dungeon can be upgraded, rebuild. For more information, please open the territory window. I would suggest you ignore that for now, we do not have enough resources or the required items for upgrading a level 15 dungeon. Kamaya opened his screen, take my shoulder, Hidori did as he was told. In a second, they both disappeared into pixels. A cold wind blew under the rising dawn sky. Snow fell from the sky, the snowflakes covered a few dried-up trees' branches beautifully. On the borders of a 90-meter radius, an area stood dried-up trees covered in snow. An outer ring of six-feet-tall wooden walls covered the trees behind them. On the trees were a few owls sleeping under the rising daylight, on other trees were several crossbills. And above this 90-meter area were northern goshawk, gliding in circles. As if protecting the two caves under them, inside the tree and wooden borders. Another glitch of pixels flashed and two men appeared in front of this 90-meter area. They both landed outside the border. No way, this is, your dungeon, one of them glanced at the other. Hmm, the second man to whom the question was asked, dabbed his glasses back with his middle finger, of course. A smile appeared on both of their faces, beautiful. Indeed. Snowflakes, beautiful snowfalls but, dry trees with barely a single leaf on them, but the sweet chirping of birds covered the area. One of them is a lair though, Kamaya told. I linked a level 7 ice dungeon and a level 11 elf lair, Hidori kept staring at the entrance of the caves, two of them with dark mouths. Hidori nodded, I see, and elf huh, he was partly curious about the insides of the lair and the bosses of the ice dungeon and the elf lair. He looked around the dungeons. The trees and birds and defense wooden walls defended the dungeons. Now you know what the gems are used for. Kamaya started walking towards the entrance gate, the wooden gate with snow on the top slid open, thankfully, I had plenty of ice mana gems and enough money, he waited till Hidori was inside the border too before closing it. To upgrade the dungeon? Ahem, uh -huh, he nodded as he walked towards the dark mouth of the cave, to add defenses, monsters, decorations, and other things. Entered God's Hell's level 7 ice dungeon quarry. Hidori silently followed Kamaya inside the dark cave, suddenly the message. Hidori saw a couple of lawn gnomes bowing down to Kamaya as he and Kamaya walked through the first floor, they bow. Ignore them, Kamaya sighed, he jumped straight into a portal in front of him. Hidori followed him from behind. We can use mana gems to feed our pets and monsters. Of course, we can eat them too. But apart from that, the gems are not of any use. We need to use the money to buy defenses and monsters, and upgrade our dungeons or lairs. We can eat the gems too, that was new to Hidori. Suppose you ate a, just suppose, you ate an ice gem, your affinity for ice element will increase. Hitori nodded. He imagined what would happen if he chose every gem he is right now. A few tens of them were monsters' core gems. Entered the fourth floor of this dungeon, the final boss floor. Slowly, make sure you do not pass out from the panic, before Kamaya could end his words, a strange roaring sound interrupted him. Hidori covered his hands in fireballs when he saw a long, slender silhouette of a monster. He was standing on the floor with snow all over the area. It had a wide entrance but the floor got narrower as it progressed further. 
Easy, Kamaya muttered, but he had equipped his wand, it stood close to his thigh. M from behind the walls, snow walls, a silhouette with long arms, wide ribs, and chest area but thin waist area. Legs, no more than two inches thick, a long snout with beard or ice froze on the beard. A monster appeared. Hidori adjusted his eyes to the scary, hideous-looking creature and read its description. Name, Wendigo Level 10. Owned by, God's Hell. Challenge Level, 3. Wendigo? Hitori gulped. Probably, it is safe cause I own this dungeon and hence it is, my dungeon's boss to protect the dungeon and, hopefully me, even he was not sure. Just how many times have you tried to enter your dungeon? Hidori kept his thoughts inside his mind. Chapter 27 The scary monster named Wendigo kept staring at Hidori. Hidori continued to stare back at the monster with his hands covered in fire. Their eye contact did not break, after a second, Hidori started to feel a threat to his life, he quickly pulled his hands in front of him, fire dash. Do not, he saw an arm stretch in front of him, he glanced at Kamaya who shook his head, it will dodge your attack and worse if your reflexes are not quick enough. Hidori knew very little about the monster Wendigo, in fact, nothing. He had never heard of such a monster and hence was clueless about its powers. He took Kamaya's order into account, his hands went back to normal, and he relaxed his stance, feels dangerous somehow, even when it is only a level 10 monster. Does not matter, cause when we link Higosho dungeon with these two, it will become your dungeon too, think before you attack, Kamaya warned him. He, too, relaxed and took a step forward. When Kamaya got a little closer to the Wendigo, it took a step back. Kamaya walked, and the Wendigo moved backward. Finally, when there was no space left to move back, it bowed to Kamaya and disappeared into its hiding place. Both Kamaya and Hidori let out a sigh, see? It fears me, Kamaya scoffed, once you conquer a dungeon, every creature in it becomes your servant. Fierce is my pet though, Hidori shrugged not my servant. Kamaya looked at him, there are some exceptional cases, he shrugged, the rest of the creatures are your servant though. Ah, right, the tigers and other monsters. Hitori nodded. Hitori walked toward Kamaya, since how long have you been playing this game? Hitori asked while observing the snow all around. Since the game was launched, six months, Kamaya replied. Hidori frowned and glanced at Kamaya. But, you have conquered only two dungeons, you are better than that, Hidori told him with a feeling of disappointment. Kamaya dropped his head down and nodded, I was stuck in the leveling area for more than two months. I was killed a few times, went back to take my revenge, and was killed again. This cycle continued for two months. That must have been. Hidori did not know what to say. He found out the way to keep all of the monsters away, but maybe because he had elemental magic already with him he managed to execute his plan. When I found a way out, I started searching for a dungeon, I messed with a few players and had to go one-on-one -on -one with them, and that lasted for three weeks. The end of the third month. A sad expression appeared on his face, I had to forcefully log out of the game by you-know-who, Hidori nodded, it took me one and a half months to find and conquer these dungeons with constant interruptions. Hitori said nothing but nodded in sympathy. If you ask me about upgrading the dungeons, first, it asks for cash, and I had my cash forcefully taken away from me even when. I needed that money for more than just upgrades. Kamaya had started to get gloomier, second, it asks for gems. I used all of the gems that I had. An awkward silence spread across the icy fourth floor of the dungeon. No one spoke anything, Hidori thought it would not be the best idea to open his mouth and Kamaya was deep in gloom. Ah, uh, after the silence of more than three minutes, Kamaya shook off the gloomy atmosphere, sorry, he rubbed his eyes, let me take you to our lair. Kamaya turned around and started to walk towards a portal that probably led to the exit. Actually, 
but he stopped when Hidori spoke, I can help you with my money. He looked down as he spoke, and, maybe, we can split the, uh. Kamaya turned his head with light tears forming in his eyes. Hidori was trying not to make eye contact with Kamaya, but Kamaya was staring hard. You know, split the looted money into a split of seventy yours and thirty mines, a silent smile, the smile of someone who has been hurt, spread over Kamaya's face, but dash. But. Kamaya started to walk back to Hidori. Only if you tell me the reason behind your need for money, a proper reason with proof and I will be happy to help, Hidori completed. He lifted his blue eyes and glanced at Kamaya who was on the verge of crying. He could see how bad Kamaya's need for money was. In the V-Arcade, while they split the shares, and even now, it reflected on Kamaya's face. Kamaya turned around and quickly rubbed his tears by pulling his glasses. He sobbed a few times but did not say anything back to Hidori. Well, Hidori was a patient guy so he let Kamaya take his sweet time instead of pursuing him to expose the reason. Kamaya turned back to Hidori, would you mind if we take a small break first? Hidori was surprised by that idea but he nodded and agreed with Kamaya's idea. After they saved the game and logged out, Kamaya quickly got out of his seat, washroom, he said and rushed off to the washroom. Hidori was phased by Kamaya's sudden and quick actions. He let out a sigh and started to look around him. While casually looking around, his eyes gazed at a glimpse of Kamaya's magic case. Then his eyes fell on his console station, on the corner was a magic circle that was not glowing. Hidori was confused by his actions once again. But he did not bother to think deeply about the little things which barely matter. Hidori, he heard Kamaya's voice from the other side of the alley, I am sorry, he started, something urgent has come up, I will have to go. Kamaya sounded too panicked, I will see you later at night. Oi, wait. Hidori glanced at Kamaya's magic case and pushed himself out of the chair. But he could not stop Kamaya, the boy whose glasses were slipping off from his nose once again, ran out of the alley first before he left the V-Arcade. He was once again left stunned by all of the events that had happened at 2x speed. He again glanced at Kamaya's magic case before sitting down. You forgot your… He sighed, never mind. But your time is yet to be. Jeju just add it to my account. I will come back to take my card," the counterwoman kept staring at Kamaya who had left the V-Arcade one hour and thirty-three minutes before his time would be over. Chapter 28 Weapons at the ready, a man with a serious expression walked furiously out of the woods. He pulled his arm out, a gun came out from beneath his battle suit. After he equipped himself with a gun he stopped a few meters away from the woods. This man's black battle suit differed from the bully's battle suit. This one looked tougher from the outside. A young man in his mid-twenties appeared from the woods, yes, sir. The young man pressed the middle of his chest. Metallic sounds echoed through the dark empty swamp area. Pieces of metal started coming out from the man's chest and covered his whole chest. The metal unfolded on his body and did not stop till his whole body was covered in a metallic suit. Where is he? He, you mean sir? The young man frowned. This young man's battle suit differed from the first person's suit. The one the second person wore was thicker, stronger, more durable, and more powerful. Overall a better product. Yes, freshman. The guy who seemed to be the boss glared back at his junior. I was right behind him till he told me to go ahead, Anne. He turned around to look at the dark woods, looks like he is not back yet. TCH, the boss turned around. He had an ugly expression on his face, do not leave him. There is no telling what these fucking mages will do if they capture him. B, but he is not in danger. And how do you know that? Do you have any telepathic connection with him? The boss' angry expression started to eat the freshman alive, we do not. He paused, we do not know what the mages have in for us, 
he spoke while stressing his every word, do. Not. Underestimate your enemy. The boss paused once again, now go and send him a signal. After shouting at his junior, the boss turned around to look at a two-story house that barely had its lights switched on. Dark woods, bushes, and dried-up brambles covered the area behind and around the house. The junior pulled out a digital screen from his battle suit and sent his man a signal. He thought, this is how my first mission starts, huh? He sighed, I wanted to impress the boss with my skills but, he stopped thinking. A rustling sound came from inside the woods. The boss turned around as soon as he heard a suspicious sound but to his surprise, his junior had already pointed his arm at the woods. Who is there? Come out, the young man shouted. What is that? The boss turned around, pulled his advanced gun in front of him, and pointed past his junior. A tall tree which was the first tree in the lane started to move. Because it was too dark for anyone to see, the person hidden in the dark was not revealed yet. Come out or I will shoot the hell out of you, the boss placed his finger on the trigger of his gun. Come on, Hidari, a voice came from the woods, do not scare the freshman there, the tree was moving, with a strong slash and bright spark of white light, the tree fell. Be boss? Hidari bowed down, I thought you were attacked dash. Ah, do not worry. Wizards and witches are not qualified to even touch me, from, within the woods, a man dressed in a black blazer stepped out. A katana's tip left the ground as its wielder lifted the katana and kept it on top of his shoulder. Seeing a man appear out of the woods, sir, the young man bowed down to the dark man who appeared from the woods, forgive me. Ah, uh, come on, it is not your fault, he moved closer to the young man, I do not dare to pee in front of my junior. Hidari was left speechless. Anyway, where is the house Hidari? The man's dark sunglasses shone under the moonlight. He stepped forward and stared up at the sky with his left hand in his pocket. The one in front of us, sir, Hidari replied, let me blast the whole house in one. TCH, nah, nah. He raised his hand, let us greet them properly. The freshman and Hidari exchanged confused glances. It has been thirty minutes since Kiku attacked Hidori and he left the house. The whole house has been silent for the last twenty minutes. Only the lights of the dining hall and the drawing hall were switched on. The rest of the house was all dark. Kiku did not bother turning on the lights. A hand swept through the cold floor. It stopped moving and spread down on the floor before another hand joined it. Her legs started moving. She placed her knees on the floor to push herself back off the floor. Down on the floor, she took a glance. The white color tiles were wet and covered in a white liquid, tears. You are not my sister. Kiku pushed herself off the ground, you are just an unemployed woman hired as my maid by my parents' money. Hitori's words still hurt her a lot from the inside. While getting off the floor, her eyes caught her broken wand that was lying lifelessly on the ground. Sorry, wand. She went and grabbed her broken wand. Kiku went inside the dining hall and stopped in front of the dustbin, guess I will have to buy a new one, she sighed as she dropped her wand out of her hands, into the dustbin. A few more minutes passed by. Kiku cleaned the house manually, cleaned the dishes, and thought about Hidori. It all seemed hopeless to her. No matter what she tried doing, her mind just would not let go of Hitori's face that she saw when he ran out of the house. Ring, ring. Kiku sprung out of the sofa. Her face suddenly lit up as the doorbell's ring woke her up from her overthinking anxiety. Without pausing for another second, the maid quickly made her way to the front door. As fast as she got to the door, she hesitated to open it. Hirokuen. She gulped. At the thought of Hitori returning, she could not help but feel overwhelmed so much that she started walking backward. Ring, ring. The doorbell rang once again, it is open, God. 
she muttered hesitantly. But in the end, she mustered up the courage to open the door. Her trembling hand grabbed the doorknob. Click. The door clicked open on Kiku twisting the doorknob. Haha. <laughs> she let out a strange laugh before she started pulling the door open. I knew you would come back. She sounded as if she is a know-it-all, but never thought you could not even survive for a single hour. She closed her eyes when the door fully opened. You are not bold enough, after all, are you, Hitori Kuen? She smiled and opened her eyes. Oh, her expressions faded. Were you expecting us, Kiku-san? She took a step back. Well, pleasure is ours. Her eyes could not leave the sight of a fairly strong and tall man who was standing in front of her in the doorway, instead of Hitori. Um, we can come in, right? She was too shocked and embarrassed to say anything. Looks like Hitori Kuen is not home, yet? The boss made his way inside the house. Kiku gulped hard when she saw a long katana on the man's shoulder. Who who are you? She asked. And get out of this house. Kiku cried at the three men who casually entered her house. Hidari and the freshman continued exchanging glances. Why were they even entering the house? Just kill the maid and run away. Do not sit there. Kiku yelled. The boss ignored her yell, he casually threw himself on the sofa, get out of the fucking house, you three, she continued shouting but they were not going to listen. TCH, too bad he is not here, everyone went silent when the man in black spoke, I was kind of looking up to meet Saibai's son, you know. No. Please leave the house, Kiku strode up to the man in black, now. Anne. I thought. His hand reached his sunglasses, he started pulling them off, that I will kill both of you together. There was a glint of disappointment in his voice. Her eyes did not move away from the man's black vertical pupils, the snake's eyes. Kiku's eyes went wide, her heart started racing at the sight of that man's eyes, and his words, who, are you? I am sure you can tell from my eyes though. He grabbed Kiku's hand, but first, let us talk. Kiku felt as if all of the strength was leaving her body. She could not fight back the man's firm grip and strong pull. She fell onto the sofa, right next to the man in black. Chapter 29 She saw two pinpricks staring in her direction. A pair of dark orange eyes with vertical pupils that were sharp as a knife. Then her eyes fell on a vicious yet tempting smirk. Let us talk first, shall we, Kiku-san? Why do you know my name? His smirk slightly faded, and he stared at Kiku with a blank expression. On the second thought, he pulled his katana forward and kept it on the floor, I think we should directly get to the point. That is more like a murderer now. Kiku used her hands to push herself out of the sofa and stand up in front of the boss. Her hand went behind her back. She closed and opened her fist a few times but, nothing appeared in her hands. She was left with no choice but to play along with these murderers. Kiku lifted her upper lip and curled her lower lip down to bite her lower lip. He lifted his eyes at her without getting off the sofa, fine, he smirked, where is the wand? Kiku's eyes wandered all over the room, where is that magic wand? She gulped. Her eyes landed back on the man with the snake's eyes, what wand? I do not have any, she declared, I do not even have mine dash. TCH, he looked down before getting up, you know, it is blue and black in color. Kiku's eyes fidgeted in fear, the boss passed a sharp glare at her, yes. He lifted his katana. Yes, I am talking about one of the three legendary wands of wizards. Kiku took a step back. Her eyes wandered past the man in black. He glanced behind him then back at her. He was not sure where Kiku had glanced at till her eyes fixed on the door of the storeroom closet. In that closet, he lifted his katana to point at a door, I will get it, thanks. She clenched her fists at the sight of the bad guy turning around and walking towards the storeroom closet. No, you do not, she ran up to him and stood in front of him, get lost, 
she looked straight into the snake's eyes. The man's expression faded. He had not expected her to be this persistent, let me have the wand, and I will make your death, well, painless? Kiku gulped. She did not move from her spot. The man was annoyed at her actions, then his eyes fell on her rising arms. Stay. She lifted her arms to protect the closet, away, you piece of shit, she dropped her head and bit her lip. She did not expect to get out of this house alive, her hope to see the daylight tomorrow was almost zero and so were her chances to survive the night. But if she was going to die anyway, why not give him a fight? Or take an arm? Or a leg? Or leave him with a grave injury? No mage is allowed to use this deadly spell unless they are in a life-threatening situation. Shinigami no Noroi. Have it your way then, the boss started but stopped. After Kiku muttered the first part of the spell under her breath, she raised her head and jerked her petite body to run inside the closet. How would you feel if an infant tries to put up a fight against a lion? You know that he cannot win anyway. The man in black suddenly disappeared from his spot after Kiku went inside the storeroom closet. There, her hands reached a package, she dug inside the box and pulled out a black color wand case which had thin strokes of dark blue color wrapping around it. She flipped open the metal case. Inside the case sat a black color wand with blue lines wrapping around it. She picked the wand hurriedly, turned around, and pointed the wand in front of her, shin, she stopped midway when she felt a cold metal blade touch her neck. It must have been her mind playing illusion games on her, but whatever the reason was, she saw her wand was about to touch a man's neck, but before it could, a pair of snake's eyes flashed in front of her eyesight. It was not her mind playing games on her, when she saw those two pinpricks that glared at her, she was sure this was not an illusion. She stared at the two people, with her eyes wide in shock, who stood in the closet's doorway. She was startled. Guns cocked. Metal clanged with each other, and mechanical parts unwound. A black advanced gun was pointed at her face by the vice boss. The freshman stretched his hand forward which soon transformed into a hollow mini cannon. Ah, she snapped out of her daze when she felt a stinging pain in her stomach. Her eyes moved down to see blood coming out of her stomach. Kiku planned to lift and move the wand away, however, the person behind her grabbed her wrist. He did not stop there, he squeezed her thin wrist in his hand. S stop. She let out a weak groan in pain. Her wrist bones cracked, and everyone heard the cracking sound. You should have handed me this since the start. The wand fell off her hand, and the man behind her grabbed it. Kiku could feel the strength leaving her arms, but she decided to protest once again, give it, back. Her shout made blood pour out of the small hole created in her stomach. The man moved his katana away from Kiku's neck, he lifted it and brought it down in an instant. Stab. Kiku's right leg gave up on her, when she looked down, the man's katana had gone through her thigh. You would have had a painless death. The man looked down at Kiku who struggled but fell to the floor. He moved his eyes to his teammates, I want you to treat her wounds and hurt her again, he pulled his katana out of her thigh, now. Shot. Hidari and his junior shot Kiku in the stomach and legs, then they used their advanced technology to treat her wounds at least, till they had stopped the bleeding. The dark man with snake's eyes picked up the wand case and walked out of the closet. Finally, mission completed, he sighed. He brought his katana back to its scabbard. Then he put the wand in its wand case. Why does that old man want this, he thought, well, not like a scientist like me can understand, and a mercenary, he is. Sir, we are done, Hidari called his boss from the closet. Bring her out, throw her on the floor, he ordered as he put the wand case in his coat's pocket. Leave me. Her voice was weak as a little insect. The man turned around. Kiku's body was dragged out, her face faced the floor, her hand was on her head, 
and her legs made a red line on the floor as she was dragged by the freshman, Hidari had ordered him to drag the woman out by her hair. Here, sir, he jerked his arm forward and threw Kiku right under his boss feet. The man looked down at Kiku with his deadly eyes. His hand reached for his katana's hilt, suffer, Kiku-san, his katana, shown as a brand new one came out, he gave it a strong swing. Blood sprayed all over the white floor after both of Kiku's legs were cut by the man in black. Kiku did not even scream this time. All of the torture had been so much for her that, in the end, she lost her consciousness. Stop the bleeding, he ordered as he put his katana back into the scabbard. The freshman got to work. Should we wait for him, sir? Hidari asked. The boss turned his eyes around. He glanced around the house at the same time he grabbed his sunglasses. No. He put on his sunglasses, we got what we came for, let that little boy suffer from the loss of his dear maid, his eyes were hidden by his sunglasses. Our mission as of this moment is successful. Chapter 30 A man in black stepped out of the two-story house. He looked forward and climbed down the two stairs that stood below the porch. His feet landed on the green grass. From behind him, two more pairs of feet stepped onto the grass. The boss walked to the center of the area. He looked straight at the empty ground which did not have even a single person around. Then he lifted his head into the night sky. Hidari and his junior followed their boss till he stopped in the middle of the front yard. They both exchanged glances. They noticed their boss admiring the moon and celebrating their victory inside his heart. Those two did not say anything either and moved their heads to look around themselves. Dark green trees covered the whole house. On the left side, on the right side, there were dried up twigs of bramble plants. Deep within the trees were a few green bramble plants with berries hanging on their vines. Strange that nobody lived around this lone house. Behind was the swamp area, ahead was empty ground with not a single house in sight. No neighbors in at least a radius of 200 to 300 meters. This must be the border of the monster-free area because nobody wants to live around here. Boss, the voice of his right-hand man entered his ears, we should get going, he said in a prompt voice. Yep, the boss brought his head down, let us head inside the woods, he turned around to the woods. They all took a step forward towards the woods. After they got a few feet closer to the woods, their boss stopped right away. Weapons He raised his head at the woods, his hand moved to his katana, at the ready. Both Hidari and the freshman were confused, but they did not dare to ignore their boss's commands. The man in black pulled out his katana which then landed on his right shoulder. Hidari too got equipped with his gun, and the freshman stretched his arm forward. What is it, boss? Hidari asked, but soon saw the reason himself. The tree that his boss had chopped off the time he appeared from the woods, moved. No, it would be safe to say that the tree was growing back. In a few seconds, it was a full-grown tree with dark green leaves, a thick trunk, and long and strong branches. Before they could move their eyes away from that supernatural tree, almost every tree moved. The freshman turned around and saw dried-up bramble vines crawling on the ground. The grass they stood on had started to wrap around their feet. Sir. He started, I think, we should a he raised his air cannon and shot at a tree that attacked him, retreat, as soon as possible. The boss raised his katana without saying anything. With a strong slash from his katana, he cut a number of trees and watched as they all fell on the ground. The trees that were cut had grown back, the same as the first tree. Is it of no use, the boss thought by glancing at his katana's blade. Hidari and the freshmen went all out with their attacks. There was no stopping the trees that grew spontaneously, no way to deflect the vines that tried to wrap themselves around Hidari and his junior's legs. As if all this mess was not enough, the roots of trees sprouted out from the ground. 
The freshman jumped in the air to defend himself against the roots. We should really run, he shouted. Fool! Do you think we are enjoying ourselves fighting these things? If it was possible then we would have fled a long time ago. Hidari reloaded his gun and fired at the branches again. He is right. The boss spoke, we cannot run into the mage city, their patrolling officers will be delighted to welcome us, in a great number. He raised his katana to cut down a tree. The freshman blew up another tree, and this tree monster, this way, we cannot make our way to the portal either. Fuck these filthy magic users, Hidari bit his lip, these woods must be enchanted with a protection spell. Most likely, Hidari, his boss sped up to him and swung his katana. What do we do, boss, he did not answer Hidari's question. He fought off the trees, branches, roots, and bramble plants. All right, after a more minute or so, the boss stopped, I will create a path for you, as soon as the opening appears, run inside the woods. Sir? No, we cannot dash. Use your wide-ranged, wide area, and high-impact attacks to continue clearing the path that I am going to create, do not look back, with that being said, the boss pulled his katana to his left side. Keep the front clear, am I clear, he asked. His subordinates nodded their heads, now, he slashed his katana diagonally up through the woods. Tens of trees fell at once, thirty, no forty trees cut down in a straight line which created a straight path for them. Hidari and his junior did not wait for another second, they followed their boss's order and ran down the path. The boss followed them. Keep the path clear, he shouted from behind. They all went deeper into the woods. The freshman was leading the group, he blew away the trees that blocked their way. The boss continued clearing the trees that tried to attack them from behind. Soon, they all disappeared into the deep woods. On the straight path that was created by the boss, more trees grew and patched up the path. A bright light lightened from the freshman's battle suit. Ah, and he fell help me, he shouted. The boss eyes fell on his junior. A vine had grabbed him by his ankle. The vine pulled the freshman to the ground and pulled him. On seeing that, the boss quickly lifted his katana and cut his junior's leg by the knee before the vine would pull him any further. Fuck you, he turned his head to Hidari who was fighting another group of vines. If he cuts the vines, a few more will attack him. And the new vines will be stronger and faster. There is no other way. The boss did not ask for permission, he slashed Hidari's left arm from the elbow. Get up, the boss turned and glanced at his junior. Huh, he paused, get up? You are saying that after chopping off my leg? The boss and Hidari noticed more branches and vines coming their way, and they both turned around, sorry, Mijai, the boss shouted. Hidari cleared the path once again and there it was, a shiny blue portal waiting for them to pass through it. Mijai's eyes went wide, you are leaving me, here, he could not suppress his shock, no, he threw himself on the ground and tried to crawl forward when he felt something grab his leg. Another vine. The boss glanced at Mijai for the last time before he jumped into the portal with Hidari. You motherfucker, his voice rang through the woods as a vine pulled him into the woods. It lifted him off the ground, a few more vines appeared from the trees, from the ground. In the end, Mijai stopped struggling. He let the vines crawl up his body, he let the vines cover his body. His eyes were fixed on the portal that was let open even after his boss and Hidari passed through it. The vines wrapped Mijai's body from head to toe. They finally reached the last spot that was yet to be covered, his eyes. The anger flashed in his eyes before his whole body was wrapped by the vines and taken away into the deep dark woods. Thanks for listening to Solo Cultivating in the Apocalypse. Have a lovely day y'all and come again.